you're going to get an astrophysicist explanation of the literal three-body problem. Yep. To get a grasp of the restricted three-body problem, you first have to imagine that two of the bodies are hands and one of the bodies is a body that is spinning. Give me two fists here, okay? okay. So I'm feeling this one, but right. now I feel that where is right. my gravitational allegiance? Right. You don't am know I, where to go. Am I going to come through? Right. But then am I going to go that, that way or this way? Don't pay any attention to that guy. He's not telling you the real truth. Stick with me and I'll guide you to the answers that you seek. Use the scaffolding to get to the roof. No way. No way. This is crazy. Speaking of bodies, specifically spinning bodies, there came a time in history where scientists said, the Earth is a spinning body. No one could believe it because they said if we're on a spinning body, we should be flopping around like Conor McGregor's arms. But the scientists said, no, we won't flop around like Conor McGregor's arms. We'll just stay perfectly geostatic the same way Mike Tyson's arms do. The scientist explained that we don't flop around because of momentum. We don't experience the speed because there's no acceleration involved. But then the people said, that makes sense for Conor McGregor, but what about Mike Tyson? His torso is accelerating, but his fists still remain perfectly geostatic. And the scientists realized they didn't have an answer. That's when the biomechanics people came in. They quickly concluded that based on conventional biomechanics, Mike Tyson must be God. An allegation that Mike Tyson himself denied. That Mike Tyson immortal, Mike Tyson God, and um, I'm not worthy of that. You are Mike. So how does applying conventional biomechanics to Mike Tyson's movement come to the conclusion that he must be a God? I'll explain by trying to emulate his movement myself, using conventional forces in the muscle. If I have my arms relaxed, when I spin counterclockwise, my fists want to stay in the same place, so you now have an equal and opposite reaction across the shoulder. If I want to keep my fist continually geostatic to my body, I have to create an equal and opposite force, which is perfect at every single moment, even as I accelerate violently. As you can see, when I try and do this, there's a delay, and even when I get it a little bit right, there's jiggle. Either Tyson is a god, with infinite coordination, or conventional biomechanics is wrong. The brain is a smart thing. For example, if I drop this ball, I can easily catch it. But in order to catch it, I only have to be right at one particular moment in time. What happens when you have to be right at every single moment in time? Then the problem becomes infinitely hard, and you're not going to be able to just compensate for that with your coordination. So for my next trick, I'm going to just try and point to the center of this ball, let go of it, and continue pointing to the center of this ball as it falls. And I've got an iPhone set up with slow-mo to see what it looks like as it falls past the camera. Okay, this is a weird scenario where I've tried to make my point 
by showing that something is impossible, but then I've done that thing at 240 frames per second perfectly fine on the first attempt. Congratulations, you played yourself. But as you can see, I did terrible in the subsequent takes. But if you believe in the premises of conventional biomechanics, you should be a lot more impressed by me doing this than me doing this. If I only have the tools that conventional biomechanics tells me I have, that is, the muscles can use tensile forces to bring the origin and insertion together, then doing something like this and keeping my fist in exactly the same place should be a similar sort of problem in that you have to be incredibly coordinated all the time. In fact, it's going to be a lot harder because I'm not just mirroring something that I can see, I'm mirroring force which is in part dependent on mass. So I'm trying to mirror the force created by the mass of my body in my arm, which is a much smaller mass. Furthermore, there's three bodies involved in this problem. So we're not just keeping one arm or one fist static. We're keeping two while the central body is spinning. This is how this got solved and we realize that Mike Tyson isn't a god. It turns out there are some extra functions to the muscle that were not accounted for in conventional biomechanics. So what I'm going to do, grab one arm, relax, pick, pull it across. So now that's nice, soft, scrunched up muscle. So what's going to happen when I tense my pecs? The pick is pushing the arm, pushing the arm in completely the opposite way that the textbooks would predict. So the point, the sort of zero point between normal conventional tension and what I'm calling negative length tension is here. So the pecs push down to there, but past that point, they return there. That relationship that happens with the pecs also happens with the lats. So if my lats are relaxed, I've got range of motion, my arms are at my side, I can move my arms across. But if I tense my lats, my arms come out a bit. So this point is the zero point on that sort of linear plane. But it, it's a 3D point, so it's just here. If I put my arm out here, it returns there. Out here, there. So literally, going forward or backwards, or in any direction, it's the same signal going from your brain to your lats. All it does is tense. So if the pecs and the lats return the humerus or the arm to a particular point, I should be able to pull my hand far away from that point, tense my pecs and my lats to return to that point as violently as possible. In this case, I'm going to appear to punch the wall whilst blindfolded, but my fist will stop immediately before it hits. Let's test it out. And that's how I solved the three body problem. So let's toss it over to the astrophysicists to see what they think. Hey, that did not seem very stable. <laughs> Something has to give. Urges. Further down the line, it goes it crazy. crazy. It's not just a little bit different. Am I on LSD? One of us is on LSD. Crazy. crazy. Surely the biomechanics people will back me up. 
That's fucking backwards. Okay, but if you want to see more videos like this, perhaps check out my YouTube channel. You can check out my research gate page where I've published my theory draft uh, along with a paper that I got published recently. Other than that, you can like and subscribe. And have fun punching walls. That's fucking backwards.